TV sound system, you know what it is, select Hype Live and Direct. Make sure you hit that notification button, hit that like button, share, subscribe, comment below. And I've got to say a big shout out, reaching out to each and everybody who's been supporting the thing right about now. TV sound system, select to hype, sound system clothing. We're celebrating 20, 10 years, should I say, in 2020. So I've got to say shout out, reaching out to everybody who's been supporting everything that we've been doing right about now. And it's going to be a crazy one. This is the one that's going to get the numbers up, man. This is going to get the numbers up right about now. We are talking to one of the most current one of the most important, one of the most influential, one of the most charismatic selectors, sound systems inside the world right about now. And I've got to say to the people them, and some of the sound systems them, no disclaimer, but like I says, some of you sounds them, you live very close. You live, you live very local, 35 minutes away, an hour and a half away, probably a little two hour drive, one of them things there. But when man fly all the way from out of New Jersey and touch down and say, yo, we're select hype deck and we need the interview, we have to make it happen, man. So I am so honored to say, you know what, live and direct inside the building for TV sound system. We're wrapping up the year in such fine style right about now. We have no other than the man himself, Jimmy Spliff, King Shine up inside the building. Fam, what he's saying? Damn, man. Select I well, go on. Long time in Adamia, you know? so, <laughs> First yeah. of all, first of all, I want to say um big respect and manners for just for taking the time out to just come in right here in my humble home. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. and just holding the reasoning right about the now. Wolves, you know? <laughs> yeah, we're there over um, then, you know. So we're not a place. You know that thing that go when we touch down, we like to go to the local spots, you know. We know they're on a the hype thing and a star thing, you know. So yeah, everything bingo. So much things to talk about because you was over here, was it last year? Uh, 17, 2017. 2017. Yeah. So that's like two years. Two years ago, but at the, exactly the same time. A year. Literally the same time. Yeah. 2017, King Shine was a vibes. Yeah. A lot of people were talking about Jimmy Spliff, the way how he's handling the sound system culture right about now. We fast forward 2019 and it looks like you are probably one of the key game changers in the business right now yeah um i've been hearing that lately i didn't look at it that way but um sometimes you have to be honest with yourself mm -hmm. and, um, when you sit back and you look at the landscape you kind of I, I would say okay i'll take myself out of the situation who else you know and you look at the platform and you say well if this sound is because you know you have your legacy sounds mm -hmm. and then you have everybody else kind of fits in this spot under that and as far as i'm concerned as long as you can fit under that and and, and be reaching up and able mm -hmm. to you know mingle amongst them then yeah. kind of where you should be and right now that's how i feel like where i'm at you know? okay cool yeah. so what, we, what we're gonna do right is because i really want to just really get to the nitty-gritty mm -hmm. but at the same time i want to really start from the beginning we might fast forward mad fast and then we might have to rewind up the Anything thing you know you car, a different thing right now Anything you know you want so i want to go first thing i want to talk about is jimmy spliff yeah growing up early days where was your passion to say you know what I feel like i'm going to take up this sound system thing where i mean like where was your when i when i say that i mean like with the early part where did music really hit you well yeah my first my first love of music was, of course, hip hop. You know, mm -hmm. you know, I was born and raised in America. Uh, my dad is Jamaican, and um, you know, I was born and raised. So my first love, of course, was hip hop, always. But of course, um, you know, you are what your parents are. Mm -hmm. So you know, my dad, of course, listened to a lot of reggae, not dancehall. Okay. Reggae. Yeah. A lot of reggae, a lot of Studio One, a lot of Treasure Isle. A lot of Joe Gibbs, you know, stuff like that. And that's, that was my introduction to, 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 to reggae music. And um, it wasn't really a lot of, with most people introduce Bob Marley first. And like my father's favorite singer is Gregory Isaac if mm -hmm. you, or John Holt, you know what I mean? Like, so a lot of that. Um, and, and, you know, that's where I kind of, like, when at the age of 14, I moved with my dad. 
the summer that I turned okay. 14, I actually moved from with my mom with my dad. So that was my introduction to kind of. Okay, so so when you say when you say um, America, which which part of the U.S. Because you know, 52 states is kind of massive. Oh, New right? Jersey, New Jersey. Yeah, born and raised in New Jersey. Okay, so yeah. for me now, growing up over here inside the U.K., the only kind of one thing that I kind of can remember about New Jersey is a film that came out in the mid 90s that was called new jersey drives yeah that was my child that was i lived that, that now was my era and now this is what i'm saying like um if anybody has ever seen that film or haven't watched it go back and watch it does that reflect real life as somebody as you Just growing up inside you new jersey it's no different it was like that it was like that it wasn't just new jersey it was new york also but the, what made it worse in New Jersey is, you know, New York is more compact. Mm -hmm. A lot of busy. Jersey, we have more open road, more bigger roads. And um, so it was more like wild cowboys. It was mm -hmm. literally like wild cowboys. Like So literally, like when that film came out, you could actually at relate that, to at it. At that time that film was out, that's what was happening. Mm -hmm. Like they had a thing they called joyriding. Like it got, it wasn't to the point where they were stealing cars to make money off of it. Mm. They were stealing cars just to steal them mm. and just to just drive up and down at ridiculously high <laughs> speeds in some ridiculous places where they had no business. But the you them somehow I don't know how them them used to can drive, you know, when you look mm. and you watch them sometime or some weekend night they just stand up on the car and I just watch them and them come and do some donut and some figure here. Yeah. And I scare me see how some man drive our sidewalk up and down the sidewalk. And so so at that, at that time then, were they youths to you or was that something that you kind no, of played a part? No, at the time, I, was, you, I would have been was, one of the youths. Youth. If I was one a car thief youth, I would have been one of the youth then. Okay, yeah. cool. One time, you ever getting a stolen car. My brother have a stolen car. Um, and me get in it and me drive it real fast and me take it and me spin it one time and then me jump. <laughs> and of course, you know you're young me take my hand and me rub off my hand fingerprint off of everything me, remember you know me never get lock up or nothing yet mm. me rub off fingerprint and everything and me I mean I say yo come say yo with my luck I will be the one person with jumping out of the car and then police start chase me mm -hmm. and me say no me not do this but no st car, stealing car never because mm -mm. I stealing car no I couldn't do it yeah no come me, me, Unlike a lot of my friends when I grew up with my, my father didn't have my life. And now I'm going to think about if me ever get catch. Problems. I'm boss head. <laughs> and I get like a whole kid boss head. Now crazy. before, now, okay, you touched on that. That's a, that's a real good outlook on the thing, you know, because I'll tell you something. That was a big, a big, big film that we used to watch. Yeah, like to you know, all of us as journey. friends, and we used it, to come around and watch that thing there and say, real, real thing. It, 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 thing. Wasn't even, it wasn't even exaggerated. Like mm -hmm. a, a New Jersey, like a New Jersey cop car was stolen yeah by kids from the city that i'm from they stole mm -hmm. a cop car and drove it was mm -hmm. driving it up and down like there was a cop in the school giving a lecture about stolen cars and they yeah. stole his car while he was giving a lecture <laughs> like these are real things that happen. okay you so know what I'm yeah so you know what we're going we're going real but um yeah away from because we don't want to make it sound yeah. like he's going in going drug yeah. growing up in um new jersey is a mad thing what, what was the positive side side of things where growing up in well, new jersey was a good look to me i mean we grew up i mean you can't say we grew up poor you know but when you grow up poor and everybody around you poor you're not really no one say you're poor everybody mm. poor so it's like but i would i didn't even look at myself as much disadvantage as others because at least me did have a father you understand mm -hmm. so like me live with my mother you know what i mean me and my brother and my sister then we live with my mother but every day as me come home from school few hours reach my father can't pull up come yeah. at the house check homework make sure everything clean and make sure everything all right and then mm -hmm. about seven o'clock in jumping and can and gone mm -hmm. it's every day every day okay every day so my father was always around okay so when when time high school reach now and a time for um for high school my mother never that same summer there was a summer time them summer time them time they were first used to sneak out the house and, and stay out the daylight mm. my mother would go to sleep you know and when she sleep we just screech out and so we sit outside, I run up and down, I run up and down. This is almost like the first time I ever born a spliff mm -hmm. and all it. This all happened this summer. 
Yeah. You know what I say? And um, what what happened was one night when I hit them at the corner, I get robbed. I came up on the corner and, and they, they, man, they hold him up and they have the gun on him and him done making him mind say, boy, he not take no check. So he take off and start run. And the man then start fire shot off of him. And this weird on at the corner. But the shot they with him fire reach way down on my yard in a way down the road you know when we say fire you know what i mean fire and everybody upon my my porch full of people and everybody scatter mm -hmm. but some bullet fly through my mother window and which part the bullet them go to the window like if my little brother did in a one position with him normally there because she have a radio over the bed head. if him ever did up there stand up that bullet would have ripped through him mm -hmm. so it was like after that she was like that summer she was like i'm getting i'm this is enough like crazy she, she moved like she made a move like a big power move like to california which you know is on the other side of the country three thousand yeah. miles away mm -hmm. and she was like i'm gonna go get things started and send back for you know, go go with your dad for a few months so that started with school started you know my, my, my dropping a high school you know <laughs> freshman you know, yeah. dropping a high school mm. no you know brother school start me in a school we start link some youth from. Cause when you go to high school, you know, it's down the hill and up the hill. Where I'm from, that's how it's split. Down yeah. the hill, up the hill. It, it go to once one when you reach up the hill, everything on the other side is considered down the hill. Mm -hmm. So I was from down the hill. You start link with up the hill people once you get to high school, everybody start link. So when I got to high school, some of the dudes on the others from up the hill. You know, me and them got cool because we got classes together, stuff together. And, you know, I'm living with my dad now. So now I'm kind of more around reggae music more than ever because mm. I'm around it every day. So every morning when I wake up, my dad has music going, has reggae. Mm -hmm. So I'm hearing it every day every, to the point where I'm going down selecting CDs. Like I want to listen to some Heptones. I want to listen to some Paragons. Mm -hmm. I want to like that, that. And believe it or not. This was the beginning of me yeah. learning how to select. You understand? 100%. Like when I go back and I look at it, I realize it. Because even when I used to put the CDs in the car, I would play one song. Like, my dad used to play one song, and then he will skip over two songs and play. I was like, why you let the next song play? He was like, nah, man, the next song the good, man. You have to skip to the good one there. Yeah. He was selecting. But my dad never played music uh -huh. anymore. But it was the same thing. So yeah. I used to, that's how I used to listen to music. Even to this day, that's how I listen to music. So I was there, like, you know, going playing what I like, playing what I like. So, you know, in high school, uh, one of my brethren, one of my cluest friend then, my brethren, Blias, is he actually, you know, he, they still have a sound now, still play their sound now. My brother Blaze, we played basketball. We was real competitive in basketball, me and him. Mm -hmm. So we would play basketball all the time. And then they would play um, football on Sundays because he's, he's Guyanese. Mm -hmm. So, you know, they play their sport. You know, I was born in America, so I played American sports. I played football, basketball, baseball. So I played American sports. I didn't play what we call soccer. I didn't play it. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Especially in high school. In high school, everybody that played football uh, like football we don't call football was from the caribbean <laughs> yeah everybody it was either from the caribbean or african so it wasn't it didn't even there was no space for no americans to try to play no football okay so um but they would play basketball and then you know it would be time for them to play a football i would still be on the basketball court they'd be like yo you know i kick two ball i'm like no i don't play it's like no i don't mm -hmm. i don't play you know what i mean the time they were about 13 or 14 years old so um but I, I used to sit and watch them play. And you know when you're an athlete, any sport, you just like, yo, I'm I'm going to learn how to play. I want to play this. I want to mm -hmm. play this. But what I did first was like, I got the video game, FIFA. Mm. This was like FIFA 94, FIFA World Cup 94. Like it was, this was the 1994 World Cup. And it, I, it was a big thing. He was like, yo, you know, come watch World Cup. I was like. Every year this World Cup thing come, y'all talk about it's the biggest thing in the world. I'm like, the Super Bowl is the biggest thing in the world. Mm -hmm. and they used to be like, what? Yeah, I'm mad, my man. Tell you about World Cup. I was like, you know what? All right, come. Let's let. Because we used to watch um, every now and then. We would watch um, the games on repeat, right? Mm -hmm. So we got some boom now on World Cup, 94 World Cup. And this is like the first time ever, like, in our World Cup. And Ronaldo, Brazilian Ronaldo. Like, me sit down and watch the brother play a ball, and it was like, it was like, I just that I, that made yeah. me fall in love with football. Uh -huh. And I think, I think what you said, everything what you're saying, right about now, this is why I'm not really too cutting you because what you're talking about, right about now, 
really elevates the situation why you're so dominated in sound system culture. Your passion to win, your passion to be on top, yeah. your passion to be in a situation where, like you said, um, if you go around poor people, you're not poor. It's, it, it, it is it's what it is. It is. Yeah, you yeah, know what I mean? And I think that is a key major importance of why I didn't even jump into what he's saying right to, about to, now. Because right. there's to, a lot that he's saying right to, now. You to, know, to, right, to, I like it. To piggyback on that, like remember where we at with my story. To piggyback mm-hmm. on that, people, th- when, I, when I got my name, when, even when I just started playing King Shine, 2009, mm-hmm. like, and I started playing and then I started, my name started making a little noise in New York. People was like, yo, that's a bad song. Everybody be like, yo, they got some good tune, but they don't have a good selector. That was the first thing that made, I said, what? We got good tune, but don't have no good selector. Like, mm-hmm. that, that the baddest thing. I, yeah. I hadn't played any dances yet, but I knew to myself, I was, because I'm, I'm listening to these audios, I'm like, yo, I'm bothered <laughs> than all of them. Like, yo, these dudes cannot chat to me. Just me. You know, and I, and, and then like, once I started bucking with the troopers and the matron and all them, when the people would hear me talk about them, they'd be like, yo, oh, y'all talk like that. you and them are equal. I was like, what are we? I was like, we're human. I was like, yo, when mm-hmm. you in the line of competition with something, you can't look at somebody more than you. You know what I mean? But that just goes with, you know, with when everything the, was going that's on. How the whole dinosaur killer thing came about. Like how we was you know talking I mean? and we, before we was talking about and having a conversation, I said to you, I said, you know, we, we may go back and forth on certain things yeah. and have a real conversation. Very early out, you says, yo, hip hop was my thing. Yeah. The minute you touched on that, made anybody who is watching this channel right about now knows that Selector Hype grew off the hip hop thing. Yeah, I'm original. Hip hop for you, um, quickly, like, like, what was you growing up in, in, in that 90s area there? Man, but, but my, my hip hop era actually starts in the 80s. Mm-hmm. You know, um, the first hip hop song I like fully fell in love with. Like that made me say, "Yo, no, I love this." Was the mm. symphony? Okay, cool. And um, it was Real a line stuff. where Big Daddy Kane said, "Big Come Daddy on, said, man. Big Daddy Kane said, put a quarter in your ass because you played oh, yourself." Yeah. And I was an arcade person, and like I just thought that was the coldest. Come shit on, man! <laughs> so different stuff now. He said, "Put a quarter in your ass because you played yourself." Mm. I was like. No, man. A human being can't set things like that. Yeah. And then I was a big, a big time Big Daddy Kane fan. Big, that was my first favorite rapper off the jump. We're going we're gonna to keep it moving. There's yeah. a lot of things. <laughs> but, but quickly for everybody, I think it's going to be a one take thing. I feel I'm just going to roll this one out mad <laughs> yeah. quick. So we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna end yeah. that, that scenario yeah, there. Anything, anything you want, big Daddy Kane or Rakim. Cause I'm, man, I'm hip hop. I'm, like, I'm UK hip hop. Kane, it's not to me. I'm biased. It's not okay. close. It's Kane. Like um, it's 100% the other day, Kane? I don't know if you saw um, Swiggy Dan from IDs made the post, <laughs> and you see it, it went. It went. Everybody was going back and forth. I was the first person to answer. Yo, because I was like, it's Kane for me. It's 100% because it was Kane? The swag. It was everything that came it, with. Everything you know he what came I mean? with was and, like, unbelievable. Rakim was, you know, and then Rakim had a flow. And you know what else I didn't like really about Rakim? I'm gonna be honest. He didn't curse. So, he, but he, okay. he didn't curse, he didn't say bad words like Kane like would say words yeah. like that I like that I related to more. Like my like my dad and mom, like my mom cursed. Like mm-hmm. she hates she don't curse now, but she don't know back then she cursed. But like our my mom we used to she would curse, she would mumble it. Mm-hmm. She would say something like Get your <laughs> But I know what you're saying. You understand know I me? Mean? I said so it was like my mom used bad words. So I used to love bad words. Like yeah. it, Yo, Big Daddy Kane was like, so it was Kane for me. It wasn't yeah, even, man. Trust me, big shout out to everybody who's logging in right about yeah, now. Like, we, we're doing was, some different kind of... really an argument for me. Different like, kind of conversation right about now, man. When Trust me. When I got me. older, put it like that. When mm-hmm. I got older and started understanding how raps are put together, the metaphors and the similes, that's when I started realizing, okay, yeah. Rock Kim's kind of hard, isn't it? Matter of fact, I'm going to tell you when I appreciated Rock Kim more, to be honest. Nice. When when Nas first album came yeah. out and everybody was like, "Yo, he's rock," I was like, "I was like, yo, this is the dopest rapper alive." And they was wow. like, "He's like Rakim." Yeah. Yeah. And I was like, "Maybe I need to go back and analyze mm-hmm. Rakim." And then I went back and was like, oh, "Okay," because all right, like Coochie Rap was my other favorite. Like I liked raunchy gangster uh-huh. stuff. You know what I mean? Like Kane had the swag, the woman swag, and Coochie Rap was you know gangster. Everything was gay. He would paint gangster pictures and stuff. I loved mm-hmm. it because you know it was. 
stuff that I looked out my window and saw every day so I could kind of relate to it. You know them we are there? Mm-hmm. Definitely, yo. But hip-hop. 